Good morning, everyone. I'm T. Dube. And uh, looking at the screen, you must have understood what I am going to do in this class today, in this lecture. This is a class 12 chapter, the last lesson. And in this class, I am going to give its presentation. But before I begin the presentation of the chapter, I would like to inform you how this lecture, the present video has been organized so that you can have a kind of, you know, guess, a kind of understanding what you are going to learn from this lecture. So the present chapter has been organized in eight steps that we are going to discuss one by one. The first topic that we will be discussing is the title. What does it suggest? The second topic that will be discussed is about the author because whenever you discuss a particular story or anything and uh, you know something about the author, the writer, it gives you first hand information. What kind of person the writer has been and what his or her opinions would be in his or her work. The next theme, the next topic that will be discussed will be the theme or central idea of the chapter. The fourth topic that I will be discussing is scene-wise detailed explanation of the story. That will be the fourth title. The fifth will be last lesson summary of the story. So after we have discussed the chapter, I will be providing you summary which will include all the keywords and then followed by summary for teachers I will be giving you some essential elements how any story should be analyzed from a teacher's point of view what are the required elements or criteria using which any short story should be analyzed like plot, characters, theme, setting, all these elements. And finally, this chapter, the last lesson, will be analyzed using those elements that we would have already discussed. So this much work is going to be done. I do not know how much time it is going to take. But of course, I try to present it in as less time as possible because important point is understanding and not how much time we are spending on a particular chapter or story. So let us begin today's class. Hope you will be enjoying and if you feel it is informative plus entertaining, do encourage me by writing your comments. So before we begin the discussion, let us take up the title for 30 seconds to 1 minute. So as soon as we look at the title, the last lesson, written by Alphonse Daudet. Earlier I used to pronounce this word Dudet, but when I checked its correct pronunciation, the word is pronounced Daudet. It is a French title and it is pronounced as Daudet. So we will pronounce it Orphans Daudet. So Orphans Daudet has given this story the title The Last Lesson. What does the title suggest to us? And why The Last Lesson? The Last Lesson because it was the last class taken by a teacher in Hamel, in his native language, that was French. So the title itself suggests us that when you are forced to leave your language, when you are forced to give up studying, reading, writing your language, then what kind of feelings, emotions take place inside your mind and psyche 
that is why the title is very apt now after we have discussed the title briefly have a look at this part about the author and i have tried to include some more information than what has been given in your book so it will be quite informative for you if you have a bank of knowledge about orphans dowdain so please look at the first paragraph now look at the first paragraph and let us understand what kind of thoughts what kind of opinions what kind of uh, incidents that were going on in france during his time would have shaped his opinions that he has described in the chapter so if you look at his period of birth and death from this also you can understand a lot about him so he was born on may 13 1814 and died in the year 1897 if you recall this period in france it was a prime time of french revolution french revolution began in the year 1789 and during this period it was at its peak so we can easily understand the kind of thoughts the kind of incidents the kind of uh, you know atmosphere that was prevalent in france during his time but important point is the second part of this the last part of this paragraph dowdy is celebrated for his vivid storytelling keen observations of human nature and his ability to capture the nuances of everyday life in his writing this is important so he was a keen observer of what was happening in day to day life this is what he has described in this particular story now look at the second and third paragraph about his time his literary career so dowdy's literary career spanned over years during which france underwent significant political and social changes this is very very significant point about him so because france was undergoing political and social changes so those political and social changes were bound to shape his opinions that are reflected through his writing his works often reflect the challenges and transformations of french society during this period so it's very very clear now look at these two paragraphs the next paragraph is talking about some of his uh, famous works one of his most famous works is letters from my windmill in french this title is letters the mon molin a collection of short stories that showcase his talent for portraying the people and landscape so this is talking about his work and the last part of the author is dowdy's writing style is characterized by his wit humor and a deep understanding of human psychology he frequently drew inspiration from his own life experiences and travels which lent authenticity to his narratives so from this brief introduction to alphonse dowdy we can very well understand the political and social changes that were taking place in france during his time and those changes must have shaped his thoughts his opinions and those thoughts and opinions are now reflected through his writing whatever writing he has done i have uh, not read much about him but it can be understood now let us talk about the background of this particular story the last lesson that we are going to discuss the last lesson is a short story written by alphonse dowdy and it was first published in the year 1873 so this year is very very important 
and it is set against the backdrop of the Franco-Prussian War that was fought from 1870 to 71 and its aftermath that means its consequences which led to significant political changes in Alsace and Lorraine. So this story was published in the year 1873 and it has been written against the backdrop of a war that is Franco-Prussian War that took place from 1870 to 71 and what happened as its repercussions, as its reactions. During the Franco-Prussian War, France suffered a humiliating defeat and Alsace and a portion of Lorraine were annexed by Germany as part of the Treaty of Frank Frankfurt in 1871. So the war continued from 1870 to 71 and then a treaty ensued that means a treaty followed after the war that was in the year 1871 and according to this treaty some area some region of France was occupied by the German and the people of Alsace and Lorraine who had a strong French cultural and linguistic identity this is again very very significant in understanding the story so people who had a strong French and cult cultural and linguistic identity suddenly found themselves under German rule leading to a period of cultural suppression so as a student you must memorize this part that I have underlined and you must quote it in your exams if you want to score good marks plus if you want to leave some impression of what kind of a student you are now a little more about the central idea the last lesson captures the emotions and experiences so this is again very very important of this time this time is of 1870 and 71 it tells the story of a young boy who have studied so we will be going a little faster from here so the narrator of this story is a young boy whose name is Franz because it has been narrated by that child that student however due to the annexation the Prussian authorities decree that only German should be taught in the region's schools that means in Alsace and Lorraine's schools effectively erasing French culture and language from the curriculum so this was the kind of change that was brought in as a result of that Franco-Prussian war then what happened have a look at so because the cultural and linguistic changes were brought in were caused by Germany then the story reflects the cultural and emotional turmoil so what kind of changes what emotions what feelings what reactions what responses were there as a result of this so the story reflects the cultural and emotional turmoil experienced by the people of Alsace as they face the loss of their French identity and the imposition of German language and its culture. It serves as a poignant, poignant means emotional, sentimental, a reminder of the importance of language. This is again very, very important, significant point that should be memorized <coughs> by students and teachers. Now, moving on to the last part, Orphans Dowdays, the last lesson, continues to be a significant work in French literature, highlighting the enduring impact of historical events on individual lives and the collective memory of a region. So, this is something about the author or the background, not author, background. And then, once you have understood the background, this is the central idea. You 
pause the video and read it on your own most of the points that are given in the background part are included here also so i have included this much content so that you can prepare you can prepare yourself for highest marks because if the content is rich you can cut out from here and you can write as much as you like so give a silent reading of this and then let us move on to the central idea as i told you most part of the central idea will be the points that are already included in the background of the story so this is for your notes please make a note and wherever you like you can pause and then write down these points on a notebook now after you have understood what we are going to do is main thing detailed explanation of this story but i am not going to give you reading of each and every line each and every paragraph this part of the lecture has been divided into presentations followed by the actual text from the story so i will be explaining the keywords and whatever explanation is given inside the paragraph means wherever i have found that there is a difficult word or difficult phrase i have given the explanation of that word or phrase in bold so that you may not find any difficulty in understanding the notes that i am providing so i am giving you detailed presentation of the chapter that is scene by scene now have a look at the first scene what happens in the story franz leaves for school very late so in the story opens you will find it's already given here also so you will find that so far as the narrator little boy franz is concerned he is starting very late from his home on that particular day when name hammer was going to give the last lesson in french and because franz is starting school very late he is in great dread of a scolding this phrase has been used in the story he is in great dread of a scolding he thinks that he would be scolded by the teacher why does he think so he is afraid because uh, he is afraid of being scolded because uh, in hammer the teacher had given an assignment that assignment was he would be tested on participles and he had not prepared for the test this was the reason for his being afraid of you know being scolded so he considers bunking the class here the last point you can see so he considers skipping school because of there are so many temptations there are so many distractions the weather is fantastic birds are chirping on the edge of the woods and there on the back of the sawmill the prussian soldiers the german soldiers are drilling so these are the distractions these are the temptations that are holding him back but towards the end of this paragraph and please stop the video wherever you feel you need to go slow and this is the first question that i have given i have shown this question so that you can write the answer in the way i have presented this is how exam perfect answers should be written so i am showing you everything how you should present your answer in order to score 100% marks in your all examinations now let us move on to story 
Scene two. Franz runs through the town hall. So as he is running for school, he is passing through town hall. And the town hall's bulletin board attracts attention as people have gathered around it. And this gathering of people around the bulletin board causes curiosity in his mind. He starts thinking, why are these people gathered here? So far as this bulletin board is concerned, it has been the source of all sorts of bad news for the last two years, from 1870 to 1871. And since these people are standing in front of the bulletin board, there must have been some reason. So, why are these people standing here? This thought is going on in his mind. But without stopping, now you can pause the video and you can read the entire detail of the paragraph. So, he encounters blacksmith, watcher over there. Watcher notices that Franz is running very fast. He is going very fast, running towards his school. He shouts. He calls after him. And uh, this blacksmith, Watcher, says, There is no need to go so fast, Bob. You have plenty of time. Franz does not understand why Watcher is saying such thing. He says that he sh there is no need for him to run to school. So he thinks that Blacksmith Watcher is making fun of him. He does not stop, keeps running and reaches to him Hamel's school. Now here everything has been explained. I have explained this dialogue is very very important. And this will be the analysis of this particular dialogue. So please stop the video and write down these keywords. The important question that can be asked based on this paragraph will be this. Franz says, what can be the matter now? What do you think was the reason for people standing in front of the bulletin board? And uh, this is how you should write your exam perfect answer. This is how you should write your exam perfect answer. Let us move on to the next scene of the story. Then there is when he reaches, when he arrives at Ain Hamel's school, he finds the scene is quite unusual on that particular day. Why is it unusual? There is an unusual silence spread around the campus. Then he enters the classroom and when he enters, he is expecting that the classroom will be chaotic, it will be noisy because it was a regular feature so far as children inside the class were concerned, they used to create a lot of chaos a lot of bustle, noisy activity, they would be reading aloud, they would be opening and closing the desks, they would be making noise. So this would be the kind of atmosphere, normal or uh, usual atmosphere inside the class. But that particular day when he reaches, he finds that the classroom is solemn, it's strange, silence is spreading all around. So this paragraph is talking about this. Next thing that he feels surprising is the presence of the villagers. This is again very, very important. So on that particular day inside, when he happens to be inside the class, what he sees that villagers, the old houser, the former postmaster, the former mayor, all are sitting on the back benches. All are sitting on the back benches. Why? He does not understand why they are sitting on the back benches. This has been again explained here. Please stop 
and write everything write everything this is this explanation has again been given the presence of uh, the villages the village people sitting quietly like ourselves old hauser so what is the the name hauser usually when i was teaching this name was confusing so i researched and find out what hauser means and everything that is required for understanding this story again from this part this particular question can come and this is how you should write the answer now moving on to the story let's move on to the next scene of the story in hamel's announcement so what happens when little franz gets over his initial fear and settles on his seat he notices that his teacher m hamel is in his fine sunday dress and the village elders are occupying the last benches inside the classroom hmm. then after that m hamel mounts the chair and uh, the shocking news the shocking announcement was going to be made by him so m hamel's announcement from here the story takes a different turn m hamel informs the students that it is his last french lesson due to an order from berlin when he makes this announcement then and what should i say a very sudden change takes place in little france he is devastated by the news and regrets not learning more this is what the story is trying to show that when in hamel announces that it would be his last lesson this announcement devastates shocks little franz and forces him to introspect feel sorry realize feel guilty and then M. Hamel emphasizes the importance of French language, and also says that it is key. It 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 is the key. It holds so far as the language is concerned. It's the key and holds for preserving their identity. So, if the French people want to preserve their identity, if they want to maintain their culture. then they must protect their language they must protect their culture this is what he suggests in this announcement and wherever you need everything has been explained over here everything has been explained just stop the video wherever you need that you need to understand that particular part now what question can come important question from this part what announcement did m hamel make and what impact did his words have on little franz the answer is given this is your exam perfect answer so write and analyze here also the next question can also come the points that i have discussed why did m hamel extol extolments appreciated lauded praised the beauty and import and uh, it should be importance not important importance of the french language what does it suggest about him so why did he extol why did he praise answer is given now the lesson the last lesson begins 
Aim Hamel proceeds with the French grammar lesson. And the protagonist, that means little Franz, is surprised by how well he understands his language on that particular day. Aim Hamel teaches with great patience as if he wants to share all his knowledge before leaving is the feeling of the narrator. He feels. The detail is given here. You read and I have this part. Again, is important. On the roof, the peasants cooled very low. And I thought to myself, will they make them sing in German even the pigeons, what does this statement mean? The statement is important because it shows how the order to teach only German is profoundly affecting the culture and language of that Alsace and Lorraine region. It hides the absurdity and sadness of this decision as even nature represented by the pigeons seems to be impacted. This emphasizes the disruption caused by political decisions. If uh, it has not gone down well or you have not understood it completely, let me break it down in simpler words. What happens when we are talking about pigeon and its cooing? So, cooing is natural to pigeon. What Franz wants to indicate or suggest. So, he says as cooing cannot be separated from this beautiful bird pigeon likewise so far as french is concerned it runs through our blood french culture is concerned it runs through the blood of the people of alsace and lorraine it cannot be separated it cannot be isolated from us so are they going are they going to make pigeon sing in german how absurd, how ridiculous it is, it can never happen, it can never happen. So this question is very very important and as I told you, I am discussing only the key points. Now this question can, uh, can come in your exam, here in the prison school, what did Franz think to himself and why did he think so? I have already explained. No need to go further. Now moving on to M. Hamel's reflection. M. Hamel's reflection is M. Hamel's thinking. So while children are writing, M. Hamel is thoughtful, pensive, emotional. And he is looking all around his class. As I am looking here, He's running his eyes from one side of the classroom to another. It shows his emotional attachment to the place. How deeply, how strongly he was attached to each and every nook and cranny. Each and every, uh, what should I say? each and everything inside the class, the bench, the desk, his garden, the entire area. So he is emotional, he is thoughtful and this question can come in exam. Why was M. Hamel so pensive? What can you infer, infer means understand about him from his thoughtful mood? And this is how you should write your answer. Moving on to next part, emotional moments. Now what happens towards the end? This moment comes. Now, after the history lesson, the little babies who are present in the class in order to learn French, they begin chanting. The alphabet of French language. And old Hauser, who is sitting on the back bench, is overwhelmed with his emotions. 
he is visually visibly emotional and he has a primer he has an old primer that means uh, an old book what he does is he takes the book in front of him and uh, puts on his glasses and when the little children are research chanting the french alphabet uh, let me give you this uh, paragraph let me read it out for you but when he had the courage oh let me but he had the courage to hear every lesson to the very last after the writing we had a lesson history and then the babies chanted their ba be bi bo bu down there at the back of the room old hauser had put on his spectacles and holding his primer in both hands spelled the letters with them you could see that he too was crying his voice trembled with emotion and it was so funny to hear him that we all wanted to laugh and cry how well i remember it the last lesson so this old house though a minor character in the story plays a very very important role and stands out among all the characters because of his emotional representation so this is again very very important part of the story and if a question is asked from this part this question should be this when m hammer was taking his last lesson what was the atmosphere like inside the class why was it so and the answer should be written like this as i have written moving on to m hammer's farewell now let us read out the entire portion from here all at once the church clock struck 12 so it is 12 o'clock in the day then the angelus that means the prayer at the same moment the trumpets of the prussians returning from drill sounded under our windows in hamel stood up very pale in his chair i never see i never saw him look so tall so prussian soldiers are now approaching and standing in front of uh, or you can say at m hamel's classroom door seeing them m hamel stands with his chest projecting forward because the end of the class is approaching and it is time to dismiss the class and says my friends said he i i so he is again overwhelmed with emotions he is unable to speak out anything he is so so emotionally charged he could not utter those words they stuck in his throat so he turned to the back boat and took a piece of chalk and bearing on with all his might he wrote as large as he could vive la france so a question can come what does this signify why did he write vive la france on the board answer will be it shows his resistance it shows his protest he shows his Uh, what should we cannot use the word rebellion so he shows his resistance that he is not ready to accept german rule but because it was already done under the treaty so he was helpless and in this way that last lesson comes to an end school is dismissed you may go this question may come again in your exam 
Francis M. Hammer stood up very pale in his chair. I never saw him look so tall. So, what does it mean? What does it show? And this is how your answer should be written. I hope you must have understood this story and I have included a lot of content. A lot of content. You can answer any question based on the material that I have included in this chapter. Let us move to summary part. Now, after we have completed the story in detail, and I do believe that you must have understood it thoroughly, it's time to make a mind map. How you can keep the entire story in the bank of your memory. It's very easy to do. You just try to do one thing. You think about the starting scene of the story. What happens at the starting scene of the story, the narrator little Franz is uh, very late for school and is running towards M. Hamel's school. What is going on in his mind? He is afraid of being scolded because he does not know anything about participles for which M. Hamel has asked him to be ready. There are so many distractions, temptations that he control. Then the next scene is a scene of the bulletin board where he finds a crowd of people standing and this scene, people's gathering or you can say crowd standing in front of the bulletin board picks his curiosity. He starts thinking why these people are standing in front of the bulletin board. What can be the matter now? Meanwhile, blacksmiths calling out him is again another stimulation, stimulant in his thinking. When he says, when he asks him not to go to school running fast because he thinks that he has plenty of time, that also stimulates his thinking. Why is he saying? He thinks that blacksmith is making fun of him and then when he reaches in Hamel's school and witnesses the unusual scene there on the campus finding the entire atmosphere quite strange and solemn as if it were a Sunday morning so he feels surprised and his surprise becomes stronger when he enters the classroom where he finds that his teacher M. Hamel is in his fine Sunday clothes. So why is he in that particular cloth? Why in that dress which he usually does not wear? Then the strangest of all these incidents is the presence of the villagers. The former postmaster, the former mayor, the old houser sitting on the back benches and looking sad, dejected, frustrated, gloomy. So the scene is quite somber. The scene is quite solemn. Nobody is speaking anything. Amid this comes in Hamel's announcement that it would be his last French lesson. And this comes as a bolt from blue for the narrator, uh, Little Franz. Following this announcement, there is a realization. There is, you can say, there is a deep sense of regret that it is because of his procrastination, it is because of his taking his lessons is teaching casually that he is seeing this day and then 
he understands why his teacher in Hamel is in his fine Sunday clothes and why these people are occupying the last seats in his classroom. So everything starts becoming clearer. Then usually it so happens that when you feel guilty or when you feel sorry for not having done something and you want to do that. So when M. Hamel asks him to recite the rule for participles, he fails. He does not succeed in making his teacher happy on that particular day also. So this also gives you know a feeling of regret in him. As class comes to end, then we find that M. Hamel is patient, he is as calm and cool as he used to be and he is showing courage to conduct his last class, last French lesson. And then when the young children start chanting their alphabet, ba, be, be, bo, bo, old Hauser's trembling lips, teary eyes, spectacles, this makes the classroom memorable charged with emotions and real you know feelings realization this is what M. Hamel wanted to happen and he succeeds very much in his mission of sending out his message what he wanted the people of Alsace and Lorraine to understand so he succeeds in his mission in sensitizing people, in sensitizing little fans. And when the class comes towards end, we find Prussian soldiers coming after their drill and standing in front of M. Hamel's class, heralding, uh, heralding their end of the day and uh, asking M. Hamel to leave the place. So he expanding his chest, he stands in front of them, showing his courage, showing his resistance, showing his, you know, unwillingness, unwillingness we can say. And then his regret for leaving that place where he has spent 40 years of his life. So this is summary which I have written here also and you can pause the video and uh, note down everything because it will help you in writing your answer only the summary part. You can keep the entire summary in your mind scene by scene only this summary part will help you remember the entire story from beginning till the end. If you manage to keep this memory also in your mind, I think it will be more than enough to write any answer to the point. Now the last part, analysis part. It is for teachers. Some elements are needed to analyze a short story. So let me show you what are those elements and how to analyze any short story. Now we are moving towards this analysis part. So these are essential elements that are required to analyze a short story and uh, I would advise students not to go into this part because this needs a lot of understanding and you do not need this much analysis or this much going deeper into any short story. So I would advise you to of course, if you want to, if you are so much interested in literature, you can do, but uh, you do not need uh, these things. So in order to analyze a short story, we need plot. Plot is also divided into 
different parts called exposition that is introduction of the story then rising action that is called read up as a sequence of stories move ahead and there is a climax and finally there is resolution or you can say if there is a conflict in the story that conflict needs to be addressed that is called a resolution or conclusion the next element that is required to be included is the characters because it is the characters their feelings their emotions their behavior and how they are reacting how they are uh, composed how they are portrayed by the author that make characters here this, we have seen the characters three characters who of course stand out three four characters in this story so far as uh, the narrator is concerned and then the teacher then uh, what should say watcher and the old houser so these characters have been created and have been given different types of nuances different types of feelings and emotions showing at different places then children so this is how the characters have been built in this story then setting what time as you have seen we have seen that so far as this particular story is concerned it has been set against the backdrop of uh, franco prussian war that takes us to 1870 and 71 so this is the time this is historic in nature and theme the central idea or message the author wants to convey is called thing and tone the author's attitude or emotional disposition towards the subject matter or characters is called tone so here sometimes what happens that author you know makes a character humorous as it happens in the case of the tiger king we will see that also point of view of course point of view is very very important because so far as the point of view is concerned sometimes story is narrated by first person the author narrates that is first person then the third person so this is called point of view symbolism use of symbols or objects in the story like here in the last lesson the prison cooing has been used so it is also important how these th things are added into story foreshadowing hints or clues provided early in the story that suggest future events so this is called when you discuss the topic when we was when we were when we were discussing the title it became clear what the story was going to talk about so this kind of hints these kinds of hints or clues are called foreshadowing so if you know these clues at the beginning irony a literary device where there is a contrast between what is expected and what actually happens is called irony sometimes it is used sometimes it is not used authors unique writing styles so what we have seen here if you look at the language part of this story Alphonse Duret has written very uh, has used very simple sentences we cannot say they are very complex to understand of course there are some typical phrases that highlight well, the message that he wants to convey and mood the emotional atmosphere of feeling evoked in the reader by the story so this is called mood so when a writer when an author wants to you know make his or her reader feel get the kind of feeling which he intends to you know intends to be transmitted to its reader that is called mood so here in this particular story the last lesson orphans today has tried to make the readers feel emotional at the loss of language and culture so mood is also very very important and this is the example of how analysis has been done i have explained everything so this is analysis of the last lesson by Alphonse Dude. you can uh, i have already discussed everything so i am not going to spend much time on it so here it is everything this is again i would suggest not for students it's for teachers so teachers can use this so that they can make their teaching easy and uh, please do not uh, make students confused by sharing all these things because it's always important for us for the teachers to 
make a difference for how much content should be used or how much content should be shared with the students and how much content should be kept in mind so there is difference between keeping the content and sharing so students should be shared as much as it is required for them to uh, you know develop their speaking reading writing and having overall understanding of the story that is prescribed in their classes now this is the end of the last lesson but it is not the end of it is not the last lesson for me actually it is the first lesson and if i have succeeded in you know explaining this chapter thoroughly and clearly good or bad i would request you all to write your comment and of course if you want my practices the questions that i have framed the the kind of you know material that i have framed on each and every uh, chapter that will help you uh, you know get mastery over each and every chapter of standard 12 in hardly a matter of say 20 days so if you are a student and you want to access to my content my questions my you know practice sets do send your request on the whatsapp number given so it's all from my side and if you feel as i told i told you at the beginning of the class itself if you feel that this is really a good lecture and you would expect more from me do subscribe this channel and uh, i promise that uh, your english will be so fantastic within a matter of a month or two that you cannot imagine even to what level your knowledge is going so my first aim is to provide all the chapters of standard 10 then slowly after this i'll be providing all the chapters of standard 10 after 12 i will be providing all the chapters of standard 10 so that students at large can get benefited from rich content that i am providing and it is not content that is more important it is presentation that is more important because so far as the understanding part is concerned it happens because of how it is you know part by part broken how it is explained how how much it is simplified that is much more important so it's all from my side hope this lecture would make you happy